Well, hello. My name's Adam Ralph. Um, I organise a lot of chess tournaments in London. Uh, my website is chessengland.com if you're interested. And uh, I also organise uh, or arbitrate a lot of chess tournaments for other people. So today I've been running a junior chess tournament in Edgware, Northwest London, for my club colleague Rob Wilmoth. Uh, if you're interested in finding out more about his tournaments, go to just Google Robert Wilmoth Chess Coaching and you'll find his website. But uh, it was a long day and I'm quite exhausted. And even before I started streaming, I've got a challenge. So uh, thanks for that. Um, so my name's Adam Ralph, chessengland.com. Um, the idea of this video is basically to cover some of the um, games that get played in my chess tournaments. And uh, you wouldn't get them any other in any other source. They're not normally found online. And um, I'm hoping over the next few months to to pick a few choice games and analyse them for you, uh, as well as playing chess online and um, playing a few challenge matches. So I've got a challenge match coming up at nine o'clock, which I'll tell you more about soon. Let's just see what we've got. I've got a challenge and I've got a question already from a viewer. So let's deal with that first. Um, what's coming up in the video later, um, I will play a few games and I will be analysing some games from Golders Green. But I have a question from somebody who was watching a previous video who asked, I was playing at the club the other night and I was winning the game quite easily and I got disturbed by background noise and I blundered and I seem to do that quite a lot. What can I do to avoid that in the future? And uh, this is a good question and I've faced the same problem myself because my chess club is quite uh, a loud club, good mixture of juniors and adults very lively background noise and I can recommend a few solutions for you but it's part of a bigger problem okay because um, I've noticed that some players no matter how bad the background noise never have a problem concentrating they're able to focus completely on the, uh, the game in front of them and other players need some help. They need, uh, in my case, ear defenders, something that you can put either over your ears or in your ears to blot out all the outside noise. And if you can hear the background noise from the traffic, <laughs> I apologize. If, can you still hear the background noise? I've, I thought I'd mastered it, but if you can still hear the background noise, then I failed. I failed you. But um, at my club, what I did was I bought um, a small pair of builders' earplugs, and they were literally two orange earplugs joined together with a string, so you don't lose them. And when you get really into your game, you stick them in your ears, and you can't hear a thing. And those were perfect for me. And other people would probably have something like um, um, I've seen somebody wearing something that looks like a pair of earphones but in fact they were earmuffs um, and really effective at keeping out the noise so what I suggest you do is investigate your options um, I think there are also um, ear defenders that um, like small balls of wax and they go in your ear um, but I'm not too comfortable with those and they tend to fall out but I recommend that you try some of those alternatives 
But like I say, I think it's part of a a bigger problem. And the bigger problem is um, focusing on the game in front of you. If you're completely focused on the game in front of you, you don't notice anything else. I remember reading a story about uh, Petrosian. It was funny. Petrosian uh, was, was deaf, but he had hearing aids. And I remember during his games, he was used to take his hearing aid off so he could concentrate on the game now can't do that but you can you can either wear ear defenders or try and develop focus on the game concentration skills and you can do that by using something like um, chess tempo um, to practice your tactics and you just solve position after position or something like chessable small advert there is chessable.com where you will be presented with position after position and you just have to keep solving them you know you set yourself the target of maybe spending an hour solving positions or half an hour or maybe just solving 30 positions and you'll find that that helps develop your concentration um, I hope that helps if anyone's got any questions feel free to either put it in the chat or to email me and my contact details are on chessengland.com so we've got the A406 in the background no it's the A41 Percy the A41 so I'm lucky enough to live right on a main road you know it's either that or uh, shut the window and today is just too warm to shut the window so hopefully you can hear me well enough to continue. Um, what I'll do for the moment is I'm going to play um, a game or two and then I'm going to take another question maybe or talk about. Somebody sent me another question so I'll probably deal with that after we've played a few games. So let's see who's out there. If anyone challenges me, I did have a challenge just now and it, it kind of disappeared. Maybe they got bored of waiting. Don't blame you. But if I can, if anyone challenges me, you don't have to be a subscriber, just challenge me and I will play a game of chess. Otherwise I'm going to choose a five minute game and see what happens. I've been watching people play chess all day, young people playing very good chess all day and I feel the need to to lose a few games of my own. So 2050, that's pretty strong. What shall I play? Shall I play E4 or something a bit sharper I think against uh, 2050? And I don't play the open Sicilian. I tend to play rather boring closed Sicilian lines and I'm not really interested in him playing a quick B5. Oh he's, he's after my pawn on F4. How cheeky is that? So let's just play G3. Play position early. Stick my bishop on G2 and try and control that diagonal. And I'm sure that there's theory on this line, but I don't really need theory. That's not... Is that a good, is that a good move? I can play e5. I'm not totally sure about that move. e5, bishop on it, attacks there. But he can play bishop b7, and then when he takes it back, I take on f6, he takes on h1. Okay, I won't, I won't go for that. Just develop your pieces, Adam. So I'm going to go knight e2 because I might want to play h3 and g4, and then I can put my knight on g3. h3, just because I want to play bishop e3 and queen d2, and I don't want him playing knight g4 or harassing me. Right, so I believe he's he's angling for d5. 
and I'm going to play e5 and I didn't want him to play d4 forking my uh, knight and the bishop so plan I'm going to play g4 and I'm going to play knight g3 and I'm going to play f5 so really I want to put my rook here to defend e5 I might even play my bishop to g3 because that has some nasty tricks along this diagonal but I'm not pretending that's a great move but it is a move the idea is to play f5 when he takes I've got e6 and covering an attack on his queen. C4, yeah. I'm going to play D4, blocking up the position. Okay, now I'm ready to play F5, and he can take on F5. Sacrificing a pawn. It's quite a good move. Takes, takes, knight takes, queen b6, knight c3, and then he can take on b2. I think I'll do it. Ah, okay, so maybe he has something on d4. Maybe. He has a tactic with bishop c5, but I don't know if it works. Okay, so the match is um, 9 o'clock. Let's have a look. Bishop b4. Not worried about that. But it would be nice to get an attack going. I've got to... Th ah, I know what I've got to do. I've got to play f5 with the idea of maybe sacrificing the exchange on f5. So I can break through on the king side. If I play f5, I do have dark squares. He doesn't really have any defenders on this king side. I can even play bishop h4 to f6, and then I'm really walking in to his position. Um, f5, chop, 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 chop. Yes. Now is the time to do it. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now if he takes it with a knight I'm definitely gonna sacrifice the exchange and play Queen g5 must be winning that or maybe even Queen h6 let's see what he does if he takes on a five he's having a good think about it Queen c7 He's giving me um, plenty of chances. Now I really want to just play bishop f6 and try and checkmate him. Ah, that's a free piece, I think. Oh no, he wants to take on f5 twice. Okay, so I can do that. And then I'll probably win a piece if I'm lucky. If I'm lucky I've got f6 following up just there. And I don't think this is in such a bad position for white because he hasn't really got going on the queen side. I mean what are his rooks going to do? Okay I'll take the piece. F6, interesting. Well, all right. It's a free piece. And I would give the exchange up here if I have to. But I'm going to double my rooks. And really put pressure on his position. I don't care about that. He can have, have the exchange. 
Ah, oh, he didn't take it. I thought he might take it because this is pinned and I couldn't take back. Well, actually, that would have been quite interesting. So knight f4 with the idea of something like... He just dropped a piece. He didn't mean to do that. I was going to play something like knight h5, but now I think he has too many pieces. Rook b7. Don't care about that too much. Incoming. So, got to try and mate him here. Maybe I'll do it with knight f6 check. Knight f6 check looks quite good. Rook c7 and e6 coming. Don't care about g2. I don't think he can do anything on g2. Coming in. Queen d6. I can mate him. I'm either going to play rook c8 or I'm going to mate him. Doesn't really have anything on g2. And his queen is pinned. And I'm just going to play mate somewhere. There you go. That was a good game. Interestingly enough, he dropped a piece at the most crucial point of the game. Let's have a look. Where did he drop a piece? He drops it about here. Knight f4. And then he just played queen e7. But I suspect um, something horrible was happening on d5 or e6. Yeah, didn't look like a very good... Did not look like a very good position. The main problem was his dark square. This little complex here around his king was very weak. And I just had to try and find a way of breaking through with f5 to bring my queen and my bishop in. And I think that was terminal. Let's play another game. Um... Still learning. Five minute chess. Okay. Got white again. So this time I'll play d4. It's about the same rating. Twenty forty six. And I'm going to play the Cully system, which is fairly dull. And then I'm going to play Bishop d3, which is even more dull. The idea being to play uh, e4 at some point. Three. I'm going to play e4. And this position is not hugely better for white any sense but it is an interesting position f5 not totally sure that you should play f5 in a position like this it does generally it just weakens your position but white has to find a plan and sometimes the plan is to play c5 and just control these squares. G5 is really going for it. 
Okay, so in response to g4, I'm going to play. I'm going to play knight e5. Play knight e5 straight away, to be honest. That might even be a good move. Is e6 hanging if I play d5? Hmm. I'm not sure that g5 can be good, but you do have to be you do have to be careful. A3, b4. A3 and B4. Try and grab some space so I can play Bishop C5, but I've played B4. And I'm going to play C5. And now he doesn't have a knight to stick on that square. So let's just sacrifice the exchange on D6 to open up this beautiful diagonal. And that, as I say, it should be a top trump. If I just go queen e5 and I'm threatening mate on h8, there's not much he can do. He doesn't have any dark square control. Rather like the last game, what can I say? We're doing the same thing. But the question is, queen h8 doesn't win. How can I improve my position? Queen h8 doesn't do anything. got to be able to do something like queen takes e6 actually could be a good move I don't want to swap off too many pieces and I have to be careful okay I'm going to swap my queen and my rook around so I'm going to put my rook on e5 and I'm going to put my queen somewhere just to get some activity I think this is quite a good queen g5 not sure about queen g5 maybe that was a finger failure maybe he didn't mean to play that But my idea now would be, oh, hello, that's just the end of the game. Wasn't expecting that. So now I'm just winning. Yeah, he resigned. But, you know, interestingly enough, this position is fairly horrible for black. Let's have a look. This position... Play a few moves here. This position is fairly boring, but Black can consistently weakens his king side, and then I can just grab lots of space. And he doesn't have what I would really like to do is stick a knight on d6. I haven't got a knight, but the next best thing is a rook, and it's a quite well-known exchange sacrifice. It really um, does not matter much. If you play rook d6 and sacrifice the exchange, this diagonal is so huge and so dominating, he can't challenge it any time. No way. So he's almost lost immediately. But if he doesn't take it, I'm going to play uh, rook to d1. And then I'm going to play probably rook to d3 and queen to d2. And just triple up. And eventually he has to give up the d-file because I'm going to play uh, rook d7 takes and then the other rook takes d7 and he's just going to lose on the diagonal or on this open d-file. It's quite horrible. So what was his mistake? His mistake was playing f5 and g5. It just looks ugly and it looks ugly for a reason. So there you go. Um, somebody sent me a uh, message while I was playing a game the other day and they said 
what are ECO codes? I've seen them in chess databases and I don't really understand what they are. And I think I found a very good explanation. If you if you Google ECO chess, um, there's a, a very good site. Let's have a look, see if I can find it. ECO codes. 365chess.com, that's the one. And um, there's a series of books. You remember books? Well, they, they were great, weren't they? Uh, ECO codes uh, originally published in um, the Encyclopedia of Chess Openings. And so ECO, Encyclopedia of Chess Openings, were the codes that referred to um, the way that each opening have, was categorised. Um, and if you're a kind of uh, ex-librarian like me, you, you like categorising things. And 365chess.com has got this really good list of ECO codes, um, breaking down all of the openings into their constituent parts. So let's say you're a very enthusiastic uh, King's Gambit player. So C30, C30 to C39 are the ECO codes you should be looking for when you're looking on uh, chess databases or other opening websites like chessbase.com. Um, they'll often use an ECO code. Um, if you just Google the ECO code and put chess after it, you'll probably find games in the King's Gambit. But it's a good start, a reference point. Um, and when you've when you've entered your games onto a chess database like Skid or Chess base or um, high arcs. Quite often, it will give you the ECO code as a reference, uh, and you get used to remembering those codes. So I'm a French player, so this codes C00 to C19 French defense. If I'm looking at, for instance, uh, a list of games that are being played online, or The Week in Chess by Mark Crowther, Twick, then I can immediately see openings that I might be interested in. I can see that these grandmasters are playing a line and it's been categorized as C19, so it's a French line. So I can look at that game immediately, something that I might enjoy playing through. Um, yeah, simple as that. So those are what ECO codes are. Um, somebody's also asking online, Percy's asking, uh, let's have a look. Uh, Blazer08 is saying you can't skip a puzzle on Lee Chess if you get stuck, or can you? Well, I don't know actually, because I haven't tried um, Lee Chess. I would have thought, basically, my opinion is, for what it's worth, you should always be able to skip a puzzle. If I'm teaching a group of players and we're looking at the puzzles one after the other on um, on chess base, something like that, and we're projecting it. We're just going through the puzzles one after the other and seeing if we can solve them. If you get stuck on one, it's no problem. You should be able to move on to the next one. Because quite often what happens is you'll see a pattern in a position and then you'll realize when you get the other when the when you go back and you look at your review the position that you couldn't get you couldn't find the answer in, you'll find that the, the answer shouts out because you've seen the pattern somewhere else and suddenly you see the pattern in that position you just didn't see it the first time round on the first pass you miss it then you do a bunch of other puzzles that don't seem to be related but contain elements that give you the answer to the puzzle that you couldn't get um, it's much easier to do this in practice now because you've got something called Chessable and Chessable.com actually applies um, learning teaching and learning methods that are used in other areas like um, language learning and um, how can I explain this uh, briefly okay let's say you, you get a book of puzzles and um, if you're diligent you look at the book of puzzles and you might you might spend a year on the book of puzzles going from one end of the book the beginning and working your way through diligently right through to the end 
And then what do you do? Most times, you'd put that book aside and you'd buy another book. And actually, that's not the best way to learn chess at all. What you should be doing is trying the puzzles. If you can't get them, just make a little note and then move on. And when you get to the end of a chapter or the end of a book, go back and do the same puzzles again. And then I mean that literally, do, do exactly the same puzzles that you already solved, do them again. And what you'll find is that you solve them quicker, you won't remember all the answers immediately. The first time you solve them straight away, the second time you probably won't solve them immediately. You might think, I haven't seen this position before, but after a while you'll get used to the positions and you'll solve the puzzles that you didn't solve the first time round. Ideally what you should do is repeat maybe 60% of the puzzles, maybe not all of them, but 60% of them just to repeat them and learn them, get them embedded in your brain. And what Chessable does is it gives you the option to, to do that. It constantly, once you've solved a few puzzles, suddenly you'll, you'll, you'll get to about the 30th puzzle and you'll realise that you've seen that before. And it might be the same, either the same puzzle again, or it might be something with a very similar theme, and you just have to to solve that puzzle using the same principles. And eventually, it sticks in your mind. Um, repetition with variation, basically. Um, yeah, maybe that made sense. The most important thing is go on to chessable.com and just have a go. You can open a free account and see what happens. I know a lot, uh, this never happened before, at Hampstead I've heard a lot of players talking to each other about Chessable. They haven't been talking about it because I've been wearing his t-shirt and I've been banging on about it. Or David Cramerley, the uh, CEO of Chessable, who hasn't been giving a talk or they has done that in the past. They've been talking about it because they've tried it out and they found it's really good for learning opening variations because you can repeat the same variations, you can put your own database together of opening variations, but also testing tactics and playing out endings. So they have whole books on the end game, or all the end games that you should really be learning if you're trying to improve to about 1900. Um, An opening theory, they have a lot of new books. So try it out and see what happens. Okay, so it's half past and I've got a match soon. Good evening, Chess Pats of Wales. And uh, so I'm going to have a look at a couple of games from Golders Green. Now, Golders Green is a monthly rapid play chess tournament that I organise uh, in Golders Green, northwest London. And um, we get almost 160 players playing over five sections and it's so successful at the moment that I'm thinking of adding another section. Um, I just need to work out, work out whether I've got enough room to put all those players. But I'll, I'll get there. Um, and somebody was kind enough to send me some games from Golders Green so I didn't have a look at a game or two depending on how much time I have. Uh, from that tournament. Normally these sort of games get lost forever. You, you'll never see games from these tournaments normally. Um, maybe Hampstead because all the games have to be written down but for rapid play tournaments and blitz tournaments uh, you never see anything. Um, so I've got some surprises coming up in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, I've taken some live footage from uh, a blitz tournament that I held, I was arbiting at recently, and uh, I'm going to show you all the footage from that and, and do some commentary. So that should be good. Um, I got all the games from the winner uh, who scored 9 out of 9, and I've learned a lot from looking at his games and how he managed to, to win this tournament with a clean sweep. So blitz coming, but rapid play tournaments, gold is green. I got sent six games. Um, which one should we look at? Let's look at this game. This is quite interesting. 
um, both players who play regularly in my tournaments and um, let's see what you think of the game it's in English and uh, our hero is playing black uh, and he normally plays uh, a fianchetto and he normally plays c5 following up so this is not unusual for him and he's playing you know very solid player playing white uh, it plays this variation I believe it's it's called a kind of Botvinnik setup against the English and it's incredibly difficult to crack this wall of pawns normally followed up by d3 I believe is very difficult to crack um, and I believe that's that setup is is typical of some Botvinnik games so I'm going to have a look at that at some point white doesn't play d4 and his his idea might be to expand on the, the king side with f4 something like f4 I believe that's probably quite a good idea so d3 is consistent with his plan and here uh, black plays bishop g4 now I don't think white's I don't think black's move bishop g4 was a blunder but it does illustrate something that happens quite a lot in chess you might recognize this phenomenon where you're getting towards the middle game and you have to develop your pieces and you don't quite formulate a plan and you start to play drift you drift I don't know if you've ever had that feeling where you're just making moves rather than thinking about a cohesive plan that kind of works have a look at this like in this position Bishop g4 provokes f3 okay so Bishop g4 provokes f3 is that really such a concession from white he's gonna play f4 anyway as we anticipated and you're gonna to have to move the bishop again is that really such a an accurate move I'm not sure I think black has to start thinking at this point if he has time about where he's going to put the rest of his pieces and uh, he's probably going to play I think something like bishop d7 and then he's going to play a6 and rook b8 and then b5 and attack on the queen side meanwhile white is going to play um, f4 maybe h3 maybe g4 as you've seen in the previous game that I played you can expand on the king side without any fear that black is going to counter punch in the center so black has to think about that and um, possibly in this position I might even play something like knight e8 and f5 although that does seem a bit risky but I need to be able to meet his f4 with something otherwise he might just play f4 h3 g4 and just start rolling his pawns towards my king so a few more moves bishop g4 f3 bishop back to d7 bishop e3 good move it's a good square for the bishop queen d2 and bishop h6 coming that's a standard plan that kind of thing get rid of the lovely dark squared bishop what does black play here black plays a6 which is part of the, the plan uh, and then white starts to I think drift a bit plays d4 well, just because you can play d4 doesn't mean you have to or you should in this sort of position I don't think it's part of white's initial plan it also means when you play d4 you're going to leave this 
horn week. So you have to watch out for rook c8 and then maybe b5 or something undermining that that pawn. C takes d4 is played and I think that's probably correct. We don't want white to take on c5 or even push. Uh, and then rook c8 and I think black criticised this move and said well knight takes d4 was more accurate and um, the only reason I can think there's not a tactical reason why that should be the best move but I think the positional reason is to exchange off an extra set of pieces and give black more freedom so something like knight takes d4 bishop takes d4 rook c8 and then black analyzed b3 and b5 and this looks quite nice black has definitely equalized at the very least but he didn't he played uh, after knight takes d4 he went rook c8 and white should probably have taken on c6 but i don't think it makes huge amount of difference. He played b3 and this makes me think white is suffering from the same issue that um, black is suffering from which is drift. b3 if you don't have to play it see if you can get away with not playing it. Maybe you can play knight d5 at some point and black played knight h5 yeah, knights on the rim are dim. Yeah, I agree. This is this is not thematic. What's the knight doing on h5? You can't really put a lot of pressure on d4, can you? So probably um, again, knight takes d4 followed by b5 is probably quite a good positional line. So knight h5. White played rook c1. And again, black makes another knight move. Okay, so generally in these in these sort of positions, um, in these sort of positions, you've got to think about your pawn levers. Okay, so black's pawn lever if you like, ways of attacking the centre with the, with his pawns and changing the pawn structure. The most obvious one is b5 because this is relatively weak square and you can attack it quite easily on the queen side with b5 so you should be thinking about b5. The other pawn levers may be f5, something like that. This is harder to justify even though you can play it in many positions mainly because uh, it weakens your king and um, as we saw in the couple of games I just played if you just make pawn moves like f5 and g5 in the previous game you can sometimes fatally compromise your position it may not immediately lose but in the long run especially in an end game you might find that these advanced pawns are just a weakness and they leave weak squares so if you play f5 e6 suddenly becomes a weak square. Um, from white's point of view you really the whole game hinges around this square d5 occupying it harassing black by playing knight d5 and maybe even bishop b6 trying to win the pawn on d6 uh, oh, sorry e7 and hoping to provoke with knight d5 black into playing e6 whereupon this suddenly becomes a massively weak square. So black has to be very careful. It's very easy for white to play knight d5 and dominate the position. And what you really want to do is when it arrives on that square to be able to take it. And of course the knight is now sitting on the edge of the board. So white can't, um, white has no opposition. He can just play knight d5. So black plays 
knight e5 and white goes queen d2 and uh, he could have played knight d5 this is also a very good move queen d2 well it's a good developing move that's really you know stick stick the knight on stick the knight on d5 why don't you and then maybe bishop g5 and bishop h6 provoking some weaknesses in black's position okay this is quite a solid structure okay if you can provoke black into playing e6 this is not a solid structure anymore suddenly he has um weaknesses on d6 and he has a weakness on f6 when you play e6 you weaken both these squares maybe too many arrows if you played e6 in this position oh, those suddenly become very weak squares dark squares dark squared bishop so white has got to do some maneuvering and because he's got more space he shouldn't exchange off too many pieces he should keep black cramped but he should do some maneuvering to try and provoke black into weakening his position so queen d2 rook c7 okay drift okay so we both we both agree i think that this this is not contributing to his overall plan um white went knight d5 with a tempo and black went rook back to c8 and there you have it so white can play quite a few things in this position he decided to play uh, he wants to play bishop b6 which is a good ambition so he played knight e2 he could have played a few other moves he could have played bishop g5 probably and black didn't wait to be provoked he played e6 and white plays knight uh, bishop to b6 queen has to go to e8 uh, and white was quite bold and went knight c7 forcing the queen to e7 uh, and now you just have to watch out that you don't drop one of these pieces they're in quite an advanced position but he does I think the right thing by instinctively sticking a, a rook on the d file putting pressure on d6 um, Michael who was um, playing black suggests that white should have played f4 and I agree f4 grabs more space but nevertheless okay rook c d1 could have played either to d1 and black played d5 hmm okay d5 if you can get away with this in the Sicilian you are normally equal or possibly even better um, question have you ever mated with the king and two bishops versus the king yes many times actually I remember once I learned to mate with the king and two bishops with uh, and I, that was quite easy and so I, I attended when I was uh, younger to try and get into positions where I just had two bishops against the king just so I could prove that I could do it if you're talking about maybe bishop and knight against king much harder just the nature of the game means that you don't often end up with a bishop and knight it's usually uh, not a combination that I get anyway and also I can do it because somebody at my chess club showed me a fantastic YouTube video and I believe uh, if you just Google triangles method bishop and knight mate that will probably pick up the video there's several ways of doing it this one isn't the, the, the quickest but it's the one I understood the clearest so somebody else showed me how to, to mate with a king with a king bishop and knight against the king and I just didn't understand whereas when I watched this video about the triangles method I got it I don't know if I could repeat it in practice but I understand the principle of it um, but there is more than one way of uh, 
achieving that particular mate. But yeah, two bishops against a king should be... I think even if you didn't know that mate, I think you could probably work it out. Whereas a bishop and knight against a king, I don't know if most players could work it out. Okay, so this position, black played d5 and miscalculated it completely. He wanted to play rook takes c7, bishop takes c7 and then queen c5 check, which is a very clever trick. But the problem is after e takes d5, rook takes c7, white has got this intermediate move d6 and d6 basically kills that idea <laughs> I ought to say that I've got this um, night bot operating on the twitch which is extremely strict when it comes to posting any links and you are very kind Chess Pats of Wales because you've just posted a link to the triangle method on YouTube and I have to tweak the settings of Nightbot um, you're very kind and I will tweak the settings it's just that sometimes when I wander away from this computer um, I have no control about what people say or the links they post except for this Nightbot moderation or your moderation if I make you a moderator so at the moment I've just banned links and um, it shouldn't be the end of the world but I will tweak it if there's, there's probably a way that I can tweak it so that I can nominate certain people who can put links on and you will certainly be one of those people so the title for the video that I was talking about is, is that you want to dance triangle method on YouTube Okay, going back to the game, we've just played e takes d5 as white and black suddenly realises that d6 stops his plans. So he plays e takes d5 and white plays knight takes d5, just winning a pawn. And uh, he could have played queen a3, but I'm not sure that would have helped him in this position. I think, you know, the, the blunder has, has come and gone. <laughs> No dancing penguins. Okay, so mods can put links on chat. Okay, let's do this live. If you tell me how to add somebody as a mod, let's see if I can work it out. I've added Chess Pats of Wales as a friend. That's easy enough. Um, but how do I add somebody as a mod? And I will do it pronto. It's probably a really easy way of doing it. But as I as I said, I'm on a very steep learning curve with this and uh, you're very patient people. So knight takes d5, black played queen e6, and knight d4. Yeah, so I think it's gone for, gone for black in this position don't have many good squares for your poor queen. Queen d6. And white could have played queen a5 here, which was more accurate. But he went for queen b4, which makes sense. He's a pawn up, and he's positionally fine. He should probably start exchanging some pieces, which is what he does. And here he could probably have, I mean if I saw that bishop coming to c6 I would just snap it off straight away, it's, it's, it's a good piece, let's take it, no it doesn't take it, I can't, I can't really fault white too much for playing this, this is a, a rapid play game and at this point both players uh, stopped writing the moves down uh, and black lost and I'm not I'm not so surprised at that. White has two bishops and he has an extra pawn and he has a queenside pawn majority and it's quite safe. All White has to do in a position like this to really make it safe is exchange off the bishops probably and exchange off a set of rooks definitely 
and then black doesn't have any kind of mating opportunities and he can just crunch crunch away with the pawns on the queen side so my my thoughts about that game we'll probably have a look at some other games in the future but that game is as I as I mentioned to Michael I think both sides kind of drifted in the opening but black can't afford to drift quite as long because he is so cramped let's have a look it's very cramped after this Botvinnik line and white playing d4 black's best alternative and it was a very reasonable alternative just just take it and just go for an attack on the an attack on the queen side and actually i think white has played out of his comfort zone there if you play the Botvinnik system you don't want to play d4 okay so welcome to chess Patsy uk to the uh, stream um let's have a look Chess Patsy UK will know this. How do I add somebody as a moderator so they can post links? I'm going to try it live here. Ah, so it's forward slash mod username. Pats, uh, so many Chess Patsies. Makes it easy. You don't have permission to perform. Oh, yeah, okay, so I've got to do it on a different screen. Give me a second. I'll find it somewhere. If I can find my chat, I can make you a mod. So it's forward slash mod and then the name of the person. There you go forward slash mod I'm gonna go mad now just don't abuse it so um, are you gonna help us beat the ginger GM just perhaps the UK has an easy way of adding people as mods. oh good you can tell me that but at the moment uh, I'll just say I've added chess Pats of Wales as a mod so feel free to post that link. It's a great, a great link. And um, I'm very soon gonna play a match, a countdown match. Now these countdown matches are a bit weird. Um, I'm not sure I quite understand Lee Chess yet. It's a fantastic site. I'm still learning. So feel free to challenge me, and I will do my best to respond and get it right so the first game will be let's have a look five minutes five minutes each now we're playing countdown india against let's have a look countdown chess we'll kick off in a second um i ought to say uh, another plug for King's Place coming up on 7th now um, 7th of July Chess Patsy UK says start the stream again easier to split the YouTube videos a very, very clever tip okay so I'm gonna go offline for two seconds and I'm gonna come back and do it all over again give me a second If you need to find out any more information about things like run chessingland.com I'll be back in two minutes. 